uh, ghetto when he was dying, he said that uh, more light, more light. Uh, I'm not ghetto myself, but I said I, I, would, I dare say that we have a bit of too much of light. You've been discussing some theoretical issues, and I hope that we have coined some new ideas and uh, new approaches. I have to say that for about seven months now, I've been trying to um, put green conservatism in practice the Polish way. As my colleague has already said, I'm in charge of coal transformation and energy transformation. But as a matter of fact, this is not what I'm in charge of. I am in charge of the transformation of the civilization. And the question that the title of the panel we've just seen is very important, but I'll, I'll speak about it later on. But what is this transformation about, actually? It's about the ideolo ideological transformation as well. Today, uh, one of the, the front lines is the European Parliament and the European Commission. But also our Parliament is a, a front line because before the 24th of February, what I was doing was very difficult for my um, political colleagues. This was obvious, but everything changed on the 24th of February. Everything changed to all of us. We all, out of a sudden, witnessed a new reality, new circumstances. And there is no going back to pre 24th of February, because this will not go back, and the world will keep changing, uh, so will the prices of coal on the market. So uh, suddenly, uh, in Poland, we have millions of new citizens. So we had to take a new approach to coal and energy transformation. What approach? Well, before the war, 70% of our mix was coal, and this is a lot. This is very much. I think that this is one of the most coal-reliant mixes globally. But the problem is that other countries have uh, minerals, and we have a lot of coal. Uh, we have huge coal reserves. The problem is that uh, Paul, uh, that the European Commission has a very different approach to coal than we have because we love coal in the, the traditional way. What does it mean? Well, it means that we have to negotiate with the European Commission. We have to negotiate on certain political solutions uh, that will allow us, well, especially now at this crisis, to, to, to mine more coal. And this is a a an ideological controversy clash because we have the national energy system and this is a system which is about keeping a energy balance so whatever happens there is light there is uh, power but there's also the energy system the the european energy system so uh, take a look. After the 24th of February, the whole socialist dynamic is missing one thing. I'm calling them socialists, not liberals, because uh, it's, it's difficult to say that there is democratic liberalism. Uh, it's difficult to me. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I represent the older generation, and I know what, what the liberal, liberalism comes from. There was no liberalism. I'm sorry for, for, for those words, but I think that, that this is the most relevant name. Now, our country is under attack oh, and only because of ideological reasons. So there is this um, 
project of uh, the, the, the shared nuclear project, European nuclear project that never came to life. And how does the market respond to the war? Well, it's simple. The French market, the German market, or the governments, maybe not markets. I think that their actions are aligned with Russians. But to, to me, today's Russia is rather a, a, the Soviet Union. What they are doing in Ukraine can be compared only to World War II and what the Soviets did in their country in their 30s. If you know history, you know what I mean. But getting back to, trans to the transformation, it's important for the conservatists uh, because our agenda doesn't change even with the outbreak of the war. It's like a physical problem. We define the parameters, parameters of functioning in this political space. We want a, an ecosystem with homeostasis. This means that uh, every ecosystem is capable of defending itself. And this is the basic principle, the basic condition for uh, life, for a living creature, because anyone, anything can be part of this ecosystem. So we have four pillars of this homeostasis to advance our, uh, to drive our transformation. I think it's interesting, so I will speak about it uh, briefly. Uh, pillar number one, the driver number one, uh, competitiveness. We are part of the European market. We respond to European activities, but we can also be skeptical. I don't want to go into the details of Fit for 55 or CO2 options, etc., because this is more a, a, a mob activity, not a free market. And also, this is a, a something very typical of leftist movements that unfortunately are dominant in Europe. When you look at them, they are afraid of two things. To them, this is the greatest evil. I used to think that they were afraid of uh, the truth and statistics, maths. No, they are afraid of the past. Because any new movement, when it appears, it uh, closes down what was before it. And take Africa. So socialism went through Africa from north to south. Unfortunately, it still exists in many African countries. And it proves what I'm going to say, that wherever there was a socialist government, practically everywhere, where what, what is left are mass graves. And I don't think it's a, an option for the future. So what uh, the success of socialism is about? Well, leaving aside media and uh, controlling media, the media, and being able to influence uh, people. But the basic thing is that this movement of uh, the conservative, uh, the conservatist movement, has made a step back. And it doesn't take part in any other field of activity. Maybe there's no courage. Well, it's difficult where no people say are saying that it, they are liberals, leftists, and they don't even understand what they are saying. This is a question of life. If you want to stand for certain values, you should impersonate them. This means you have to face all the consequences that might arise. And sometimes the consequences are difficult to face. 
But getting back to the drivers of transformation, this is where the competitiveness issue is uh, key. Well, because as I've said, the energy transformation is the driver of uh, the transformation of civil the civilization and um, competitiveness is key here uh, in the European context. So our economy needs to be competitive. So we are creating a larger competitive block here. And it's difficult in the current circumstances because going back to the um, physics class and the physical problem, there are many external issues, American, Russian, Chinese. And this also determines what Europe can do. Uh, there is no um, there is no strong leader in Europe, and many people in Poland say that after after the 24th of February that, that Ukraine turns to Poland, the role on Poland uh, the role of Poland is now even stronger and is strong enough, and more and more people say that maybe CEE will take over initiative in the European Union. And this brings me back to the previous issue. Importantly, Europe in 20, 30 years, well, the important question here is what the role of young conservatists is here. Well, to me, it's simple. You need to be the leaders of the change. But what for and why? E easier said. Well, so the answer comes in the, dri the next drivers. Uh, climate change is also a driver. Mitigation, trying to limit the impact uh, on the environment. Well, we have to face that. We have to combat that. But not everyone is rich and handsome. Uh, each of us uh, have their own livelihood, and we do have our own individual circumstances. So uh, let's turn to climate. We do whatever we can to address climate change. But we do it not because someone waves a, co a colorful uh, flag in um, Brussels. But we have a plan. We need to be cautious. And uh, we have to do it step by step, slowly but steadily. The next driver is society. To us, this transformation is not that not, not done for transformation itself or for the bureaucracy in Brussels, but this is done for people, for individuals. I know that this transformation will concern all people in the world, but we need to take care of our citizens who live in this um, in this uh, culture, um, our country, but also our neighbors. The energy balance um, is also very important. Uh, how we understand it? Well, we want every citizen to have uh, electricity at home at a affordable price, not too cheap, but um, not too expensive as well. And also, this electricity needs to be manufactured here in Poland, because now who manufactures energy in, in a country decides about the country's sovereignty. So given our neighbors, we need to rely on our own sources. Therefore, we are fighting for the Polish coal. But lignite like and hard coal are very dangerous, very toxic when burned. They generate a lot of gases and toxic gases. They also um, generate particles which are life-threatening. Life Therefore, we also are looking for new technologies. 
the technologies are there. They, they are available, but they are extremely expensive. So we need money. We need funds. As in life, uh, you need alternatives. We need to step uh, by step work to our, towards obtaining uh, the right energy balance so that we can avoid uh, energy poverty thanks to maintaining status quo and we can avoid any other um, social threats. So, um, socialists might be revolutionary. We have plans. They want chaos. We want harmony. Why? What for? Well, the answer is easy. This is the, easy, the easiest way to uh, nirvana, but I would call it humbleness and uh, being wise. Uh, 